Father, thank you that we can be here this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, and I pray that you open our hearts and our minds and that you stir and work in our hearts for what you want to do. May our lives bring glory to your name, that it is no longer I, but you. Father, and as we go into vision where we reflect, recast, and reestablish, I pray, Holy Spirit, may you be the one ministering to us today, that you stir in our hearts what you are calling us to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I want to do an icebreaker, just something to loosen us up a bit. Because, um, but I, I don't want us to go into groups, so I'll just say, and think for yourself in answering this. Choose a number between 1,000, 10,000, a hundred thousand and a million. Just choose one of those. You don't have to say what you chose, just in, in your mind, choose it for yourself. And then if you can use that amount to bring change to the world, what will you do with that money? It's, it's easy to say. Now I want you to flip that number around that if you chose 1,000 rand, now choose a million. If, if you chose 100,000, choose um, 10,000. If you chose a million, choose 1,000. Now, if you could use that money for this church, what would you do? Just, just answer for yourself. It's just stirring something in yourself. Because if I ask you for, this is not about money, this is just an, an exercise to get to a point, so bear with me. If I ask you for 100,000 Rand by next week, Friday, you all might say, Lou, that's impossible. Like, Whatever you are thinking, just um, maybe, maybe keep it to yourself. 100,000 Rand next week, Friday, that's a lot of money. But if you were to receive news of a loved one that is in bad shape and they need a life saving cure for 100,000 Rand by next week, Friday, or they are no longer among us and we will see them one day in heaven, you might start to think a lot differently in getting that end goal in mind. Because it is not necessarily what you need to get, but the why you need to get it that is enabling us to move forward. But then, if we are so desperate for the outcome, we think drastically with importance on how to solve the situation. And then innovation comes in, and we think all these things, and how can we achieve this goal? But this morning, I have a, I have a much easier challenge for you than raising money. And that is, this morning I want to establish vision, vision for GBC, and a call to reach the lost at any cost, to make Jesus known. That's why we are here this morning, to share the vision that God has given us. If I ask you if we can reach and invite 10 people to church, it's a lot easier than raising 100,000. You might say, okay, well, that we can do, Lou, that we can do. Exactly, that's the response that needs to stir in our hearts, that that's achievable. That's something we can actually do. Because sometimes we want to think so big that the vision overwhelms us. And although the vision is big, we can break it down. Like, there's a joke that you might have heard that, how do you eat an elephant? Oh, it's a bit by bit, exactly. How do you achieve a big vision that God has given that if you just think of the reality of the vision, it scares you because it's so big. Then think of, what can I do now? That is, invite 10 people. Not each person invite 10 people. We all, so together, invite 10 people. That's one invite per person. That's achievable. That's something we can do. That's something we can work with and move forward. But before we need to move forward, we need to look back at where do we come from? Where are we now and where are we going? And this is something we do every year because August is our birthday. The first Sunday in August is our birthday. It's GBC's third birthday today. And we've been through a lot. We've learned a lot. And we've grown a lot. And we've grown in surety knowing that God has called us for this and we are not looking back. But we will get to this. But this year we started a one-on-one -on -one discipleship program, which has been going good. We launched growth seminars and two out of three we've, we, we've done. And that has been so impactful. 
We did a breakthrough seminar where we dealt with the wounds of the past. We did a growth where we spoke about the Holy Spirit and his role and need in your life. And the next one, it's not the evangelism training. That's just something extra we do. The next one is launch. It's where we take you through how to pray and how to minister and how to function in the calling that God has given you. And we started Alpha Groups. And this morning we said, well, if you would like to host an Alpha Group, speak to us. Because ministry is not us. It's us. We are not the church. We are the church. So we need to build away from ourselves. And that's how growth happens. And we've invested quite a bit in sound system and a few other things throughout the year, which we believe it's, some, it's, it's things that we put in place for what is going to come. But when we look at recasting the vision, okay, well, what is the vision? I'm so glad you asked. What we are going to do is we are going to change our slogan from e equipping the saints to make Jesus known. It's from the same idea, but it focuses on a different part of the process. If you um, to communicate e equipping the saints, then you're focusing on the process. It just means that there's a process, there's learning, there's growing, yes. But the end goal is to make Jesus known. And if we communicate that, the process becomes so much more inviting that I, I want to be a part of making Jesus known. Because Jesus said that, to Paul Ryan, sorry, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of all. And that is where our focus is. In Matthew 28, go and make disciples. And if we communicate it's equipping the saints, we are focusing more on the discipleship, on the becoming discipleship process than making disciples, make, to make Jesus known. But what are our values? We, are, we have a biblical worldview and beliefs that everything we believe and communicate is Bible-based. Christ-centered fellowship is because Jesus is the center of everything we do, and he is the reason why we do what we do. He is the reason why we are all sitting here. It's to know him and to make him known. And then three, it's spiritual ministry, because we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. It has not ceased, and we've seen miracles and things happen. And our vision is to grow believers, to live Christ-centered lives for the work of ministry, building up the body of Christ. Because if believers grow in their relationship with God, it's only natural that it flows out to all areas of life. And at the end, Jesus is made known. But our mission, it's that what do we need to achieve? The vision is what we are doing and the mission is what should be the end result. It's to become believers who live out the gospel message to make Jesus known. Many people can sit in a church Sunday after Sunday, but if you're not active in your faith, then James says it's dead. I cannot go and sleep in the garage for a year and then one morning wake up and say, now I'm a car, no, I'm a person, and I need to live for Christ. We are a, um, a church that believes God has a plan for each and every one and seek to equip believers to live out their relationship with God, to go out into the world, the workplace, family, friendship, to reach the lost. And I'm going to share a bit more about that this morning. Is that, and our strategy is to plant 20 churches. And you might say, Lou, you are crazy. Absolutely. Because it's not my vision. It's God's vision. I did not say, let's plant 20 churches. God said, plant 20 churches. If, if it was up to me, I would have said, let's plant one church and see how it goes. But that's not what God said. God said, plant 20 churches. And that's what we're going to do. That's what we are busy with. We are busy establishing a foundation on which we are going to build everything else that is going to come. And our purpose is to establish multi-ethnic kingdom communities that impact communities for Christ, for the glory of God. Because if a church comes together and they reach out to the community, what happens? Change happens. And that is our purpose. It's to make a gospel impact in South Africa, in the city. But what is yet to come? In September, we will have a race reconciliation conversation. We've had many of those before, um, but um, I think 2021 onwards, it was a bit challenging. But we are going to redo that in September this year. We are doing the launch seminar before the end of the year. In November, we are going to end the year with a big outreach where we plan to do something for the, for the young guys that just matriculated, where I feel God is leading us to do an IT workshop 
for the guys because some of them are sitting there but they don't have the skill or the experience to advance themselves further and I feel God is calling on me and anyone who wants to to partake to make an impact and um, reach the youth while the while there will be a women or girls outreach simultaneously and then later a sports outreach to the youth playing soccer and then prayer prayer opportunities will come and evangelism prayer evangelism opportunities will come and we will share that as we go but when we come to re-establish it is a call to move forward a call to grow and to continue we have learned a lot in the past three years of gbc we've learned a lot about ourselves about god about church ministry and the hunger to reach the lost has just kept on growing and growing and growing that i find myself so frustrated asking god how do we reach people more effectively and it has led us to go down the road of evangelism training because how do you how do you reach people if you don't know how well you learn how to do it and then you do it my biggest prayer in the last few months have been god give me a heart for the lost to move forward in equipping and, and training anyone and everyone who is willing to re- um, so to respond to the call of the gospel but then you might ask yourself but how do i move forward how do we move forward and it's not just me we how do we move forward perhaps we have lost the importance of why the gospel is to be shared or maybe we have been caught up in our own self self-confidence or in the lack thereof and think it is out of our reach to share the gospel it might be so overwhelming that we rather do nothing than something well if that is you allow God to encourage you this morning and I want to want us to read from Luke 9 the verses are up there I couldn't share them on you version um, but it is there. Luke 9 57 to 59 and onwards this is what happens is Jesus they were busy going somewhere and as they were going along the road someone said to him I will follow you wherever you go and Jesus said to him foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests but the son of man has no way to lay his head and to another he said follow me but he said Lord let me first go and bury my father now for the next verse just to get some context going is that a Jewish burial happened in two phases First, it was when someone passed away, then you would bury them in a, um, in a um, satum. But a, on, on the year anniversary of the dead, they will go and collect the bones and put them in a smaller burial or a box or something. So there were two burials. So in this situation, it could have been either that this guy's father has already died, and now he's waiting for that anniversary to do the second part because the eldest son it was his responsibility to take care of that in the family or it might have been that the father has not yet died old and he's waiting for his father to die meaning this guy is delaying the call and here comes a challenge and Jesus said to him leave the dead to bury their own dead but as for you go and proclaim the kingdom of God yet another said I will follow you Lord but first let me say farewell to those at my home and Jesus said to him no one who puts his hand on the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God we cannot respond to the call and say yes Lord here I am and continue to plow and look back when we look back this will happen we might think we're going on a straight line but we are obscuring where God is leading and this is such a a, a cultural challenge for this guy saying let me first bury my dead or my father and let me first say goodbye but there's an importance on the gospel that challenges us to respond and maybe you might be here this morning and 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 and, and you might be feeling that yes i want to follow god but i first need to change my chase my career maybe i want to follow god but maybe this needs to be put in place look jesus came and he said come to me all those who are burden and heavily laden he didn't say go first sort out your burdens and then come to me no he said come to me it echoes what we shared last week is that when you are dirty you don't take a bath and then go shower or shower then take a bath no you take a shower to get clean and that's God he um, so takes you messed up and he cleans you up for his purpose and his glory 
And in Luke 10, verse um, to 2, Jesus was sending out the 72. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send our laborers into his harvest. Jesus is sending the 72 to go out and proclaim the gospel message. And he's saying there is so much work. There is so much work to be done. But the workers are few. And I find um, to today that one stronghold that the enemy uses to hold us back is to say that I don't have a place. What can I contribute? And the, th- and the thing is, if we can see how much work there is to be done, we will realize that we all have a part to play. We are all saints because Matthew 28 Jesus says, go and make disciples to reach all the nations. And then after they were sent out, they came back and they were rejoicing in what happened. And they were giving a uh, testimony saying in Luke uh, 10, 17 to 19, the 72 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. But so many times we can get caught up in the lie that the enemy can hurt us, that there is something we cannot do, but the thing is that all authority has been given to me, therefore go. It's not in our power that we go. It's not in our ability that we even go because so God says that those who are weak I make strong and in your weakness I get the glory if it was all us and all about us then who would get the glory? us or God so if you have faults if you don't feel that God can use you God can use you because it's for his glory and his purpose and, and then he goes on to verse um, to, um, to 20 and says nevertheless Do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And that's our joy this morning. Because if we look at, just reflect back to us, and what does the gospel mean for me? We can go to Romans um, 10 verse 11 to 17, but I'm going to read 11 to 13 and then 14 to 17. So Paul writes, for the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. Can we just meditate, or not meditate, sorry. Can we just uh, take that in for a moment and realize that God will not put us to shame when we put our hope in Him. Yes, it's scary to go out. Yes, it's scary to walk out in your calling and you are feeling so lost that where's my backup? Well, you have the Holy Spirit as your backup, so you are not alone. Jesus is with you always, and He will not put you to shame. And then he goes on to say, For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That is us. We've called on the name of the Lord. We are saved. Glory, hallelujah. I mean, God took me out of darkness into light, and he took you out of darkness into light. And that is such an awesome, powerful thing that if we can look at our and our own lives to see the change that God has done in our lives, why would we not want to share it? Because if I just keep it to myself and see someone else and not share it with them, how are they to respond? And that's exactly what Paul is saying, that the gospel has saved you. That is awesome. But there are people out there who've never heard the gospel. And he says, verse 14, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed. How can we say to someone, how can you live a godless life if they've never heard the good news? They didn't have, they don't have what you have. They, they've not heard what you heard. And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. You are saint. Do you, know, no, do you want to know how I know that you are saint? Matthew 28, go and make disciples. But how is the world going to know of the good news if no one goes and shares it with them? And he goes on into 16 and 17. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. 
Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. And so many times we can find ourselves in conversations with people who bring other ideas of salvation, other ideas of Zen or peace or whatever you want to call it. There's only one way and it's Christ. And who's going to tell them if we don't tell them? Who's going to share the good news with them? It's good news. And the thing is, in 1 Corinthians 1, 18, Paul writes, for the, word, oh, sorry, for the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. Those who have never heard the gospel, they don't understand what it means to hear the gospel. For them it's foolishness. For them it doesn't make sense. Why do I need to live life this way? Why can't I just go on in the way I am? Well, that's how they respond, because they are perishing. It's foolishness for them. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And someone spoke to me yesterday, sent me a voice note um, to, um, to, to pray against something in our nation. And in his prayer, he, he said, Lord, we've become so complacent that we forget that we have the power of the Holy Spirit in us to be witnesses, to go and evangelize, to reach the lost at any cost. And um, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 3 to 5, so Paul writes, and says, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. Because the gospel cost Paul a lot. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom. It was not in philosophies. It was not in reason. But in demonstration of the spirit and of um, power. So that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. My words cannot convince someone to accept Christ. That's the Holy Spirit's work. And we need to allow him to do what he does. But we can engage in the conversation and ask the questions and allow ourselves to ask the questions. Um, Artie Franz writes on Luke uh, 10, he says that the kingdom of God is not merely an option for a religious few. It is a manifesto presented to everyone and requires a clear response of acceptance or rejection. But we are all called, but our responses differ. And you might ask yourself this morning, well, how do I respond? Maybe I have responded, but I just need a, a, a reminder or, or a refresher in how do I respond? But maybe we first need to deal with why should I be ready to share the gospel? Simply because Matthew 28, and Jesus said so. But I know for some that's not answer enough. But Jesus calls on us to go and spread the gospel because he has given his life so that we can live. And everyone deserves to hear the good news. No one is too far gone to, to hear what Jesus has done for them. And we are called to forgive because he has forgiven us. And because we have received that forgiveness, Romans 5, 1, that we are now at peace with God, other people deserve that as well. That is why. And because God loves the world so much that he gave his only son, not just for me, but for those people that I might not like out there. And then secondly, you might ask, how do I be become ready? How? Okay, yes, I, I am ready. But I'm, 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 I'm still stuck somewhere. How do I become ready. So glad you asked. Pray. 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 Number two. Pray. Number three. Pray. Back to number one. Pray. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into the field. Pray that God prepares your heart, even if you are not yet ready. I think that one of the most powerful prayers that I prayed is at a time when I was not ready. And I said to God, I know you know how prayer works. I don't know how prayer works. So I'm just going to pray this prayer and I'm going to put my trust in you and I'm going to trust that you will change my heart and that you will give me a heart, that you will change my heart and that you will give me the boldness to go and do what you have called me to do. And I was not ready. That was many years ago. Number two, say yes. Say, here I am, Lord, send me. Just say, yes, Lord, here I am, send me. Because the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Number three is grow in your relationship with God. 
The deeper your relationship with God grows, the more His heart is revealed to you. The more His heart imparts into your heart. The more you are exposed to His love, it becomes natural to live out His love to others. And get equipped. One-on-one discipleship, Saturday prayer, evangelism training, outreaches. Get involved in as much things as you can because it builds confidence to do it with others. Even if you just observe to see how is it done, it builds confidence in you. And we have a growth path that helps you to get from where you are now to where God is calling you to. Number three, maybe you need to overcome some setbacks and strongholds in your life. That maybe you have tried to step out and got hurt. Or maybe there's something else going on that you can come before God and say, God, just search my heart this morning. Just search my heart into what is preventing me from stepping out and reaching more people for you. Or even to grow in my relationship with you. Because know that God's grace is sufficient for you. And His harvest is ready, but the work is of you. No setback you have ever faced will change the call that God has on your life to go and make disciples. Where there is setbacks, God comes and lay a deeper, stronger foundation so that we come to a place where we are totally dependent on Him. Last week I shared on the boat that maybe when setbacks come, we can take it as an opportunity and say, God, change me so that my foundation becomes stronger, that I don't waver when the winds and the storms come. Number two is many are held captive to strongholds and often it is your self-worth and you are saying to yourself that I'm just not good enough. God cannot use me. God doesn't want, want to use me. I have messed up so much. God will never be able to use me. I'm not equipped enough. These strongholds grow over time and they hinder us from becoming followers of Christ and our lives to be changed. And that is an absolute lie of the enemy that you are not worthy. You are so worthy that God sent His Son for you so that you can grow and become ready. And number three, distractions. Maybe there are some distractions in your life. We call them procrastination. I don't know if you know that word. I don't know if if it applies to your life. But I know I need to go and sit with God and say, God, where am I procrastinating that is hindering me from getting to where I am to where you are leading me because procrastination and distractions they could hinder you from getting to where God is leading you number four know that God has forgiven you and that Jesus death on the cross has paid the price therefore we can go and be disciples that make disciples sometimes maybe we we know that we need to make disciples but the discipleship making process is maybe not always for us because The call here is to may my response be, here I am, Lord, send me. Use me in any way you you want to use me and help me become ready. Because we are all broken vessels used for His glory. No one is better than the other just because God uses them. But He does call on us to live a life obedient to Him, being sanctified by, by Him. And the other truth is that God's work is teamwork. We cannot do this alone. We need teamwork. God's work is teamwork. And V and I, we thank everyone that has ever contributed, has, who has ever shown up early to help set up and stayed late to pack up, everyone that has ever offered someone a lift or invited someone to join us for church. We thank you for buying into the vision that God has called this church to. And this is but just the beginning. And let us all as one move forward to reach the lost. And whoever is, or, and, and whatever is holding you back, let us deal with it and bring it before the cross. So that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And how will they hear if the message is not preached? And how will the message be preached if no one is sent? And how do we start this? You just say, Lord, here I am, send me. Whatever it is in my life, whatever is happening, deal with it so that I can be saint and live this life and go to heaven and hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And receive our crown of glory. It's not about us and us receiving it, 
but it's about making Jesus known in this life. Because people are perishing, they are living in so much pain, and they honestly need Jesus. Let us pray. Father, I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, and I pray that you prepare our hearts and that you anoint this message, Father, that it does not fall on the wrong soil, but on the right soil. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will come and bring water. And may you stir us up, Father, to realize that we can do something regardless, irrespective of where we are. If it is by prayer or by action, something can be done. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, that you stir us up, that your Holy Spirit come and empower us to move forward. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.